Hi guys, Jeremy Parson here. I'm the in-house educator for Ethica Wines and today Ethica has asked me to talk a little bit about the differences between organic, biodynamic, and sustainable grape farming. Um, it's a question I get asked a lot when I'm doing seminars and guided tastings and there's a lot of confusion around uh, these terms that are often used in marketing materials about wine. So let's talk a little bit about that. First of all, one of the things we need to make clear is that while organic and biodynamic are related categories, and in some ways they can even overlap, we'll talk about that, sustainable is actually a totally different field, and we'll get to that in a second. So let's start by uh, talking about what organic means and what biodynamic means. Organic's kind of where it all starts. Organic farming means that no synthetic, in other words, no chemical pesticides, herbicides, or fungicides are used in growing the grapes. That doesn't mean that copper and sulfur can't be used as preventative measures against mostly mildew, but no synthetic, uh, again, pesticides, herbicides, and um, uh, or fungicides can be used, okay? Um, one, one thing to note, and I've written a blog post that we're gonna, we'll share along with this video, is that there's a difference between organic grape farming and organic wines. Organic grape farming has to follow the precepts of organic farming. Again, no synthetic herbicide, uh, pesticides, herbicides, or fungicides. And a label on a wine can say, wine made from organic grapes. But for it to be called uh, an organic wine, only organic products can be used in the winemaking process. So it's an important distinction between organically farmed wines and actual organic wines. One of the main uh, ingredients in any wine is yeast, whether it's native yeast, naturally occurring yeast, or whether it's cultured yeast. And for example, for it to be an organic wine, not just a wine from organically farmed grapes, it has to be made using organic yeast, for example. Um, that's just a short definition of what organic is. Um, and again, we're publishing a blog post with this video that has some really great links and more, uh, a little more lengthy uh, description and definitions. Now, biodynamic farming, and the kind of the easiest way to understand biodynamic farming, grape farming, is biodynamics takes organic farming to the next level. The, the uh, basis uh, for biodynamic farming is organic farming. So there's no, again, no uh, pesticide, synthetic pesticides, herbicides, or fungicides. But biodynamic, the step that it takes to further the notion is that the biodynamic farmer actually doesn't just, he doesn't just, he or she doesn't just not use those synthetic products. He or she also bolsters, enhances the biodiversity and health of the soil, the hummus as it's called. Uh, uh, I know we think of, a lot of people think of hummus as a dish from the, the Middle East made from chickpeas, which I love. It's called hummus because it looks like the earth, and the word hummus actually means earth. And the idea uh, uh, of behind biodynamics is that you're enriching the life of the soil, the life of the earth. Um, and they do that primarily, again, you start with organic farming, but you add to that mix um, what are called the biodynamic preparations, which can be divided into two. One is field preparations, and the other is compost preparations. And again, there's a lot more to this, and you'll look, if you can take a look at our blog post, we have an expanded uh, description of this. But basically, uh, what the biodynamic farmer is doing is he's taking cow manure, putting it in a cow horn, burying the cow horn, this is the most, uh, the preparation 500 it's called, it's the fundamental preparation used in biodynamic farming. He fills the cow horn with cow manure, he buries the corn in the winter, he waits, he or she waits until the spring, 
and when the spring comes, the uh, um, the manure has decomposed. He or she unearths the uh, uh, the cow horn, and th they take the decomposed cow manure and vaporize it. They add water to it. They add, they use a sprayer to spray it around the vineyards. And what that does is by spraying around all this micro uh, biological matter, it enhances, bolsters, enriches the biodiversity of the soil, making it making more microbiological uh, life happen there. Um, it's it's a, there's a big step between just eliminating the chemical residue that can be from organic farming, uh, that from by using organic farming practices, and actually making the soil more healthy. Um, both organic and biodynamic farming uh, ultimately lead to wines that are more. The way I like to talk is they're more vibrant in flavor. Um, it doesn't mean, you know, you can make a great wine without organic or biodynamic farming. And in some places, some of the greatest wine appellations and uh, uh, subzones of those appellations, there are some places where biodynamic farming and organic farming aren't even possible. That's not, that doesn't mean that they can't make great wines, uh, but it means that they have to use conventional farming in order to achieve that. Okay. So again, organic farming, eliminating all chemical synthetic products, all right, or uh, biodynamic farming, uh, going a step further and bolstering the soils by using the field preparations and other compost from different types of roots, chamomile, valerian root, stuff like that, that are composted and again, vaporized and spread over the vineyards to enhance their biodiversity. Now let's shift to sustainability, which like I said at the beginning, isn't really the same thing. It's not in the same category as organic and biodynamic uh, farming. Um, a lot of sustainable farmers are organic. A lot of them are biodynamic, but sustainable farming is, is conceived to protect the, it's about the environmental and human impact and community, one thing we forget when we talk about sustainability is also community impact. So when we talk about sustainable, we're talking about an approach to farming that looks at the overarching community, agricultural community, and says, how do we sustain this whole community? How do we ensure that everybody's healthy and everybody's productive? How do we ensure the economic success of, of the community? And also, how do we protect the people? How do we make sure that everybody working and living around the, the vineyards is safe and healthy? Now, one of the main parts of sustainable farming is elim eliminating or reducing as much as possible the use of uh, chemical products, synthetic chemical products. That's to uh, reduce chemical residue and to reduce chemical runoff not just to the immediate farm to improve the quality of the fruit that is cultivated there, but also to protect the community at large from chemicals that can be harmful. But sustainable farming goes even beyond that. It is about uh, your carbon footprint. It's about your energy imprint. It's about making sure that all the crops that are farmed in and around the vineyards are also healthy and, and not making an impact or making the least impact as possible on uh, the community, the agricultural community as a whole. So there, there you can see organic, you can be a sustainable farmer. An organic farmer can be sustainable, but a sustainable farmer doesn't necessarily need to be organic. And as a matter of fact, there is some controversy between the sustainable world and the organic world because organic farming does use, for example, a lot of copper as a preventative antifungal spray. Copper, for example, can uh, uh, seep into the water table and make it impossible for animals to graze nearby, for example. So you can see that these are two 
in some ways can even be competing categories. They're not this. They're not part of the same category. Um, there's a couple of in our blog post. I put a link to a couple in California. A uh, sustainability and practice SIP is one of the certifications for sustainable farming. In Oregon, a lot of people use live uh, certification. And I highly encourage you, only because they're English language resources, to look at those sites to learn more about what sustainable farming is. So listen, I hope this was useful. Uh, please have a look at our blog post. Uh, leave us a comment if you have questions, comments, or even if you have a suggestion for a topic that you'd like us to cover. And thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate you being here. Be safe.